Ernie, I've been filming all week. I'm tired. The bathroom, the bedroom, the kitchen, the tiles. Can you please clean my oven? Ernie. 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 Oh, Ernie. Ernie Whitaker. Make sure you dust the glass with Ernie and polish the crystal, honey. Ernie, darling, come in. Come and have a drink with me. Yeah. G'day, my name's Ernie. I'm your new house cleaner. Damn you, Ernie. There's a reason why I get you to clean these people's houses out with it. And with my life. It's almost gone. It's almost gone. You bastard, Ernie. The house cleaner is about a house cleaner who starts a new job for a woman who becomes very paranoid about his motives and his cleaning. And um, it's, I offered the role to Ray Pierce, who had you know smaller roles in Moonlight Magic and um, Baronia Boys, so she got to have a lead. And the film basically has a lot of female cast in it, and it's all about um, paranoia. Uh, so in the film we have, uh, as I said, mentioned Ray Pierce as um, character called Lizzie, her daughter is played by Carla Bonner, and um, Ernie, who is the in fact the house cleaner, his best friend is Zara Kozwalski, who's an acting agent, who's played by Chantal Conturi. You brilliant bloody bastard. Bloody cleaner. The House Cleaner, a new film by Timothy Spanos. It comes out that he cleans for uh, a lot of famous Australian actors and celebrities and he gets the jobs from his best friend who's a casting agent. The more he cleans for these actors and celebrities, the more dirt he picks up on them and can relay back to um, to the agent. I remember at the Trashorama Film Festival, Dick Dale asked me to come down and uh, he showed an old short. Um, he was doing a retrospective of Trashorama. And this is in 2009, I think, and he got me on stage and said, "What's your? what would you love to do as a filmmaker? And I, I just, as a joke, turned around and said, my dream is to do an Australian cult film starring Delilah. About three years later, it actually happened. And I got Delilah for a role in The House Cleaner, where she plays a former disco queen from the 70s who only cleans the house for and she's a former AFI winner and we pulled out the AFI award and all the records and all this sort of stuff and I swear to god her performance in that film is just to me I, my jaw dropped her singing is just I, mean, I could hear her lungs vibrate it is so strong the her eyes her performance it was just to me it was just it was sad it was real it was in the moment and I have such fondness for her you can actually see that come. And she she was a delight. She was a true superstar. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. She didn't stop singing in the car, and. Um, yeah, a very, very special person, both of them, wonderful, wonderful ladies. And why they don't get employed more or used more is beyond me, because Chantal Conturi is a complete treasure. I saw Chantal in her restaurant, she had a restaurant at the time in Adelaide, and I was there for something, and I used to go to her restaurant, and I said, look, I've got this script, and she goes, oh, they sent me the script too, I don't like it. And I said, here, read mine, this is the house cleaner, it's the roles as an acting agent, her face lit up. And she goes, is she a bitch? And I said, yes. Her performance in that she has, she told me she didn't base the character on any particular agent because she said there's so many that are absolute cows and bitches and told me some wonderful acidic stories. She goes, it's an amalgamation of both. And that's what we both do when we actually perform these characters. Inspector Reynolds. Inspector Davison. Looks like we got ourselves some whore bashing. Violence against women is one that I can't stand. Where do we start? What do you suggest? I suggest we get the law down in the streets. Sweets. He's got me here working on Piss Corner during the day, and then, right, at night, I've got to go and do the graveyard shift at his brothel. He's got every pro from arsehole to breakfast handing over the liquid assets. I've worked bloody hard for you, and you sit there and take 60% commission? Didn't actually want to make a film set in the 70s at all. That wasn't, that wasn't the original idea. Sizzler 77 came about um, 
Terry Yabawa and Alan King, who are in Moonlight Magic, playing the policeman in there, in that film. Um, we shot their scenes, their additional scenes, and they got on so well. Um, they had never met each other, but they did it so well, and they looked so good together. And when we shot their scenes, um, they both said, you should do a spin-off for us. And also I thought, oh, you know what, cop buddy movies, crime, yuck. Oh, okay, I'll give it a bash. So I originally started doing this thing, and I think I tentatively called it Footscray Scum. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like these cops running around but I don't know, it wasn't working but some of the scenes were quite good from my perspective at the time And but the more I was writing and the more characters I was writing they just started to sound like um, it, you know, it was 19 whatever and I think I was talking to a friend about it and he goes, why don't you just set it in the 70s? Once I decided to actually change the script and set it in 1977 and it all just poured out because there was so much history 1977 was, was actually a like I said, it was it was a it was a different era. Things changed. Things happened. You know, everything became plastic then. Donna Summer and Georgia Moroda released "I Feel Love," with, which changed music for it. Electronic. Star Wars came out, changed people's perception of film. You know, until now. You know, before then, people were still paying money to see a kitchen sink drama or a film like "One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest," which would be on the pictures for two years, for example. Uh, Australia. I mean, we still had Fraser, but, you know, we were getting new immigrants into the country. He was letting in, you know, refugees from Vietnam. Uh, there were things like the Easy Street murders, you know, the, uh, the Granville, the horror of the Granville train, you know, accident at the time, which, you know, I mean, that blew people away. And we were now laughing at Graham Kennedy on Blankety Blanks, which was the most saucy and titillating show to ever be screened at, what, 7 o'clock. You know, it was filthy. But, you know, kids watched it. So I spent a year looking for the right cast. And then we just started doing it. And I thought it was going to be really difficult, to be honest. But before I knew it, we'd finish filming. The biggest problem for me is organisation and getting people to turn up at the time all together at the same time. Um, I don't like that part of it. I have to do it myself. And I just, just picking up the phone and getting everyone there is just, <laughs> it's just a nightmare. It's, and there were times when um, you know, in Sizzler 77, I, that's why I think, how did we actually end up doing this? Because um, I cut out scenes because of this. Um, uh, there were scenes I had to cut out because cast couldn't make it. I, one whole character went. Um, I gelled two characters into one, things like that. Just And, and finding crew was, was difficult. I think there was a couple of days where there was no crew.